do you sometimes wake up and think to yourself, am I going nuts? All we seem to get in relation to this wretched coronavirus is negativism, alarmism and fear. There are very few syllables of hope and happiness. I see polls today which tell us that 62% of voters agree that Daniel Andrews has handled the pandemic well. Queenslanders, in fact, Anastasia Palaszczuk, 68% say she's doing well. Voters say Scott Morrison has handled the pandemic well. And you might wonder how we get these figures. Well, it's easy. You see, from the outset, the prevailing mood generated by politicians was alarmism. Remember how there would not be enough intensive care beds. 150,000 people were going to die. This was fed to us in press conferences every night. So if the argument being ventilated is death is around the corner, unless you do as Big Brother politician tells you, then when you wake up in the morning, you think, my God, I'm alive. I've got Daniel Andrews to thank for that. He tells me this thing kills you and I'm alive. It's rubbish, of course, but these politicians have thrived on fear. And that's why never once have they said 99% of all cases are mild. They won't tell us that today there are only eight cases in Australia which are serious. They won't tell us that. I've said we need a national advertising campaign to tell us the fact and tell us the truth. We won't get that either. Government won't, governments won't do it. It'll expose them. Government won't tell us that in three sets of testing data compiled by officials in Massachusetts, New York and Nevada, 90% of people testing positive carried barely any virus. You see, we've been down this track before in relation to alarmism on a million fronts. I remember when this Dr. Paul Ehrlich was an international hero, like the flatteries of this world. The Stanford University biologist, oh, they're wonderful, these scientists, who said in 1967, I quote, the time of famine is upon us, and it'll be at its worst and most disastrous by 1975. It was internationally acclaimed. This is like telling us we'll run out of intensive care beds, 150,000 people will die, and this is like the Spanish flu. Fill people with alarmism and fear, and then they must be grateful when they manage to live. Fortunately, I've been around long enough to hear all this alarmist nonsense before. Do you remember Y2K? The Commonwealth Bank was testing over 61,000 systems. Over 1,500 were date sensitive. So by the year 2000, of course, they'd fail, would they? Critical sites, kaput. They'd all be buggered. The government even instituted a Y2K industry program, and we were told that call centres, operation centres, and administrative buildings would carker. The Commonwealth Bank had a Millennium Program Director. Do you remember what happened to Y2K and the Y2K bug? Why are we not told, as I read from the Federal Department of Health, 15th of September 2020, it's a week ago today, a heading, Australian Government Department of Health Therapeutic Goods Administration. Quote, the reliability of COVID-19 tests is uncertain due to the limited evidence base. I repeat. The reliability of COVID-19 tests is uncertain due to the limited evidence base. That's the Australian Government's Department of Health one week ago. And it further says, quote, there is limited evidence available to assess the accuracy and clinical utility of available COVID-19 tests. Does anyone tell you that? If not, why not? So what's it mean? Donald Trump spoke at this Davos World Forum earlier this year and got it right in refreshing simplicity. He said, quote, we must reject the perennial prophets of doom and their predictions of the apocalypse. They want to see us do badly. The alarmists, he said, have been wrong on previous occasions, predicting a population crisis, mass starvation and the end of oil. Well, where are the modelers and the scientists now and the prophets of doom? I'll tell you where they are. They're still at it. Now we're told we're entering a summer which is going to be a nightmare. If you go to the beach, you'll have to stay a towel's length from the next person. You'll be able to go to the pub and drink with your mates, but only if you're sitting down. Your freedoms count for nothing. They're going to put a stop to the Aussie tradition of crowds at the beaches, and you'll be told by government to not hang around for too long and avoid the middle of the day. Where is the evidence to justify this? God knows what they'll do if you ignore them. And then this, we're told, is a year-long program year long. You see, these politicians have got the power and they're going to hang on to it. And they've frightened you sufficiently so that presumably we believe, aren't they good people? They've saved our lives. Well, count me out of that crowd, I can tell you. We know how to look after our own health. We don't need some politician who in the real world would struggle to be appointed deputy principal of a primary school. 
We don't need them telling us how to safeguard our own well-being. They keep talking about cases. They never tell us that 99% are mild and well over 99% recover. They just want to whip us up into a lather of fear. Oh, the Sydney fireworks will go ahead, by the way. But most people will watch them from home, so we're told. And for weddings, no dancing, no mingling, no singing, no more than 150 guests, and only the bride and groom are allowed on the dance floor. So we're going to have wedding police, I suppose. And if you go to the movies, well, you'll have to sit one and a half metres apart. Screenings will be staggered to allow staff to disinfect the facility. Where is the evidence that tells us these things must happen, that these things assist people's health? Christmas Day? Oh, you can only have 20 guests at home. So there'll be Christmas Day police, I suppose. And there's a daily limit on visitors, so long as there are no more than 20 at a time at Christmas, who makes these rules? And the politicians are loving it. They've never been so powerful. They want to rule our lives. Yes, 90, 968,000 people have died, so we're told. Have they died from coronavirus or with it? This is in the world, in Australia since February, 854 deaths. The 450 people die every day in Australia. Eight people are seriously ill. Eight. You know what I mean when I say sometimes I wake up and think, either I'm going nuts or the joint is going nuts. Are these plans we're now told today a year long? When will it end? Is this another Y2K job being done on us? Happiness out the window? Fear and alarmism are the uninvited guests seemingly forever. Thank God for Donald Trump. How close was he to the truth when he branded those warning of out-of-control global warming and other environmental disasters? He said, the heirs of yesterday's foolish fortune tellers, the alarmists, have been wrong on previous occasions. He's dead right about that. But why will no one tell us? What the Australian government's Department of Health has issued in its regular update a week ago, September 15, I quote again, the reliability of COVID-19 tests is uncertain due to the limited evidence base. I think we're entitled to wake up in the morning thinking that the world's gone mad. Perhaps the final say should go to the Victorian strongman Daniel Andrews. He really said, quote, all of this could be avoided if people don't protest. Because protest is not only selfish, it's stupid. Or what about this one? You would be surprised by how much would be avoided if people stop insisting on their personal freedoms. Because insisting on human rights is not only selfish, it's stupid. Perhaps that prompts you to wonder, why you even bother waking up? Oh, just a final thought. May I even be arrested for daring to say any of this? No, Alan, you're not going crazy. I agree with you 100%. The world has gone mad. Politicians need to come clean. They all, Everyone needs to come clean. Everyone in this whole system that's underpinning this whole whatever you want to call it needs to come clean. And you're not going mad. And the world has gone nuts. And I totally agree with you 100%. This is exactly what I've been saying for months, but no one's been listening to me.